The house supposed to be a safe place, but not if you were born back in the day. They used to have various powders, potions laced with dangerous chemicals like arsenic, drinks and medicine with opium or coke, eye drops with toxic belladonna, and let's not forget potassium chloride pastilles, which were used to soothe sore throat. By the way, those pastilles could spontaneously combust, but what we will cover here is radioactive things that were used by our ancestors. It all started in 1895, when Wilhelm Rodgen stumbled on x-rays while experimenting with Leonard and Crookes tubes. Next year, French physicist Henry Bacquerel accidentally discovered spontaneous radioactivity. So from there everything started rolling onwards, or should I say downwards. In 20th century people didn't know much about radioactivity, but it did sound alluring and mysterious. So all those scammers and health quacks started making various radioactive products, claiming that it will help. One of the more prolific inventors of such devices was William Bailey, unlike other scam artists which made fake radioactive products, meaning those products had no radioactivity, William Bailey actually kept his word and made them radioactive, perhaps too radioactive. One of those products was a small device designed to restore lost manhood by irradiating it. National Atomic Testing Museum curator started to get worried when she noticed this device, so she tested it with a Geiger counter. It showed about 57 mg per hour. It also was two times more potent 100 years ago. Three days of constantly wearing this would make a man temporarily infertile. If you wore this thing all the time, every day for a week, you would experience a painful skin burn with various ulcers. Next items that I would like to cover are radium dial watches. I think most of us have heard about radium girls, which in 1920s worked in watch factory. They would lick paint brushes to get a nice sharp tip and used toxic radium dye to paint watch dials. By licking this substance, they would expose themselves with a lot of radiation, enough to literally make their jaws disappear. These watches with radium paint, which illuminates dials in darker places, well, don't just lick them and you will be fine, right? Wrong. Even though they don't emit much of radiation, they do produce radioactive gas called radon. When people inhale enough radon gas, they might have more chances of developing lung cancer. One of radium dial watch in a poor ventilated room could possibly increase radon gas levels 134 times the safe limit. After USA wiped two Japan cities with atom bomb in 1945, just two years later, food company decided, hey, let's make a cool radiation ring for the kids. General Mills Kicks cereal brand offered this special ring, if you send them 15 cents and cereal box top. So it wasn't actually in the cereal box, however, this ring still contained polonium 210. Even though amount of polonium was probably minuscule, it still is polonium, which is one of the most toxic elements on earth. It is 250,000 times more toxic than hydrogen cyanide by weight. But this is only if someone swallowed it, so as we know kids are uh, smart enough to not eat random objects, so it's safe. Anyway, why would they put this radioactive material inside the ring? Well, if you remove this plastic cap and look through special plastic window and you were in the dark, you would see polonium alpha particles striking the ring's zinc sulfide screen, which would look like uh, white flashes. These rings are still for sale, however, since polonium 210 has a half-life of 140 days, by this time it has lost most of its radioactive power and these flashes are no longer seen. In 1912 some dude patented a very healthy jar. A jar which had its inner walls painted with radioactive materials such as uranium and radium. Who would have bought this item, you might wonder? Well, it was people. Not only they bought this jar, the demand was so great that the dude who invented the thing had to sell his operations to another company. Anyway, this product worked like a simple jar where you would place water, kept it overnight. The radioactive walls would irradiate the water and make it a very healthy thing. 
thankfully the radiation was quite mild. The more problematic was radium which, uh, as I covered before, produces radon gas. Also the spout part of this jar was made out of lead and arsenic, so the water was not only radioactive, but filled with toxic metals. Until about 1960s, the radioactive elements uranium, thorium and potassium-40 were used in glazes for tile, pottery and other widely available ceramics. The more popular ones were fiesta ware with uranium oxide glazing. As long as the dishes were not chipped or broken, it was quite safe to use them for food consumption. The reason why it becomes dangerous if it is chipped is because of alpha particles, which can be released and the alpha particles are quite dangerous when ingested. Eating acid foods like spaghetti with various sauces could potentially cause alpha particle leakage. Also, if you were bad with knife cutting skills, you could also damage the radioactive glazing and release some alpha particles. However, there is no information on someone getting sick from using fiesta wear. It's 1930s and your mom is taking you to a shoe store. Normally store people would uh, give customers few size shoes and you would pick the best fitting pair. To make things easier, a peculiar device was invented. They literally made x-ray shoe fitting device. This was made mostly for kids since their feet grow fast. So a customer which was usually a child would place feet inside the machine. This machine would then give a live x-ray view of feet through three portholes. One for kid, second for mom and the third for shoe salesperson. They would see if the kid is able to wiggle the toes freely. You would think, so what? We have x-rays in hospitals. But those machines have tubes powered with just 8 watts and we still have various LED protection. Shoe x-ray machines, however, those could be more than 700 watts and had wooded panels as a protection. Especially in USA, the machines were extremely radioactive. They had no lead shielding. It is estimated that during 20 seconds customer moving his feet, he would be exposed to 0.13 sieverts of radiation. One machine was found to be able to shoot one sievert per 20 seconds. That is three times more rengans than infamous elephant's foot in Chernobyl. Damn, one sievert, that's crazy man. Five sieverts by the way is 50% uh, deadly. This is almost unbelievable. For those skeptical people I will leave a link with source in the description. Thankfully the highest radiation dosage was shot at the feet which are probably the least radioactive affected human body part. However, some shoe salesmen complained of various radiation burns. The weird part was how there were people who just wanted to come to look at their own feet under x-ray machine without buying any shoes. Now if radium could do such horrible things to dial girls and they only swallowed a little bit of it when uh, painting watch uh, dials, imagine if there was a medicine with radium and you had to actually swallow it purposely. This medicine is called Raditor. At the start of the video I have mentioned the dude which created the manhood enhancer thing. The same dude also created Raditor. Of course Raditor also uh, was some sort of a cure for manhood and uh, impotence and it was filled with radium 226 and 228 isotopes. I think we all have seen that horrible picture of a man without a jaw. This man was an industrialist guy who was just hell bent on consuming Raditor daily. Only after ingesting 1400 bottles of Raditor he stopped. He felt ill, he lost weight, he had constant headaches and his teeth started falling out. His lawyer said this about his condition. Wall upper jaw, excepting two front teeth and most of his lower jaw had been removed. All the remaining bone tissue of his body was disintegrating and the holes were actually forming in his skull. When he died, he was buried in a lead coffin. Now let's look over some other radioactive household items. 
One company in the 1920s manufactured medicine pills which had radium inside. They claimed this Radio X tablets without gripe, pain or loss of meal or one minute time will dissolve the clogging of the gall ducts, enabling the liver to throw off its secretions, putting everything through the proper channels, leaving the system in a natural and healthy condition. However, these tablets had a small dose of 30 nanocuries. For example, by drinking rabbit or bottle, you would get 2000 times more radium than in one tablet of Radio X. Also not very radioactive, but still pretty interesting. These were supposed to work as some sort of a magical eye cure fixing nearsightedness, myopia and other various eye problems. It had as much radiation as a radioactive pill. Manufacturer claimed that the, the best results were obtained by wearing the lenses for a period from 5 to 10 minutes twice per day, keeping the eyes closed during the treatment. Also, in previous century glassmakers loved to use uranium to color glasses. Uranium would give glass green and yellow colors. They are radioactive, however, way less radioactive than Fiesta wear. If you shine UV light, the glass starts to glow. Cigarettes are quite toxic, so what we do to reduce the danger? Stop smoking? No, we insert a radioactive card inside the cigarettes package. Wait, what? Yes, in 1960s there was a device which allegedly would reduce tar and nicotine inside the cigarettes. You think you had the cool toys when you were a kid? Not as cool as this one though. This is a radioactive atomic energy lab kit which was released in 1950s. It comes with four sources of radiation, including uranium ore. Sounds very interesting for a kid. The kit even has a Geiger counter, which kids at the time supposed to use to find uranium ore deposits. Surprisingly, this toy had poor sales. How about a radioactive toothpaste? This toothpaste contained radioactive element called thorium, but not that much since thorium which was in the paste was just in monazite sands. People who made this toothpaste claimed that it would destroy germs and strengthen the defenses of teeth and gums. And finally, this one object is a canned radiation. People just have to make money out of anything. So somebody had an idea to go to the accident at Three Mile Island and can the air. The contents of the can had 185 milligrams of radiation, about 2700 times smaller dose than the little one. Psst, this can is just a gag.